isotopes. This, uh, we didn't talk about this in grade 10. We did in grade nine though. Uh, and how we know we can't gain um, protons or lose protons. We can gain and lose electrons, but they don't change the mass of the, the atom. All the mass lies in the nucleus. So if we can add protons or lose protons, but we can gain neutrons, okay? We can change the number of neutrons. And changing the number of neutrons, we have something called isotopes. So it becomes an isotope if the mass number changes due to an addition or subtraction of neutrons, okay? So uh, all neutral atoms of the same element contain the same number of protons and therefore the same number of electrons. But the number of neutrons can vary, okay? Isotopes are atoms of an element that have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons, okay? So we'll see an example. This is oxygen. We, will, we might write it down as oxygen 16. This oxygen 16 tells us everything the 16 represents. The atomic mass, right? So this is our regular oxygen molecule, okay, as, as we looked at it before. Now, look at the following. Another variation of oxygen. What does the 17 represent? The mass number. But we won't find this one in the periodic table. So because we can't find this one as, you know, we can't find this mass number for oxygen, we call this an oxygen isotope. How do we name it? We name it, as, as we said, according to the mass number. So if we say that the mass number is 17, what are the number of protons for oxygen? Eight. It still hasn't changed. What has changed? The number of neutrons. So here we have how many neutrons? So neutrons we have eight. How many neutrons do we have here? Nine. Nine. Okay. Let's look at another common isotope for oxygen. 18. So the mass number, 18. But our number of protons are still eight. Right? But how many neutrons? Ten, Ten neutrons. And that's what we, we've added neutrons to change the mass number. Okay. And we call this one oxygen 18. Okay. So, now, the isotopes of an element have very similar chemical properties because they have the same number of protons and electrons. That doesn't change. Protons, electrons, doesn't change. The only thing that's changed is the number of neutrons because we've increased the atomic mass, okay? And that they differ in mass because they have the different number of neutrons. So that's the only thing that has changed. Because remember, we can't add protons. Because remember, this can't turn into nine because then it's not oxygen. It's the next, next element in the periodic table. And as we said, according to the atomic theory, we cannot just convert something into another atom just like that. So, some special isotopes. Some isotopes are more unstable than others. They're nuclei, okay? So, their nucleus, nuclei for plural, are more likely to decay, releasing energy and subatomic particles spontaneously. We will look at uh, isotopes later on in chapter four. Uh, so, don't worry too much about it, but just know the terms, okay, that we're looking at uh, today. So, this process is called radioactivity. And any type of isotope that is considered radioactive, okay, are called radioactive isotopes or radioisotopes, okay? All uranium isotopes have unstable nuclei, nuclei and are referred to as radioactive isotopes, okay? So here, a key term. I don't know why I didn't bold it, okay? So radioisotopes, these are the ones that are considered radioactive, okay? The, 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 uh, the, the nucleus of these isotopes is not very stable, okay? And like I said, don't worry about why. We will cover that um, later on. Right now, we just wanna refresh our memories in terms of isotopes. Now, there are three known oxygen isotopes. All are stable, but they've synthesized, they've created 10 
completely unstable ones. So 10 radioactive isotopes for oxygen. And again, we will look at that um, as we, uh, when we get into chapter 4.